Hello and welcome to this video on work scheduling models and we're gonna just jump right into it. A movie theater requires a different number of full-time employees on different days of the week. The number of workers needed will be given in the table. It is required by law that a full-time employee must work exactly five subsequent days per week. Please formulate an LP that lets the movie theater minimize the number of full-time employees who must be hired. So in this problem, I'm going to show the proper formulation and the actual mistakes that most students make uh, when looking at a problem like this. So of course, um, I'm also going to introduce the idea of an index, uh, which is very basic. Of course, you can have your decision variables representing one day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Or an easier way to look through this is we have an index of 1 through 7. Repre 1 representing Monday, 2 representing Tuesday, 3 Wednesday, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So now we don't have to have all of these different decision variables when we're going through, we can actually just um, use this index of 1 through 7. So I 1 through 7, representing the days. So we're first going to look at our objective function. Which we can see in this problem. Um, is to minimize the number of full-time employees who must be hired. Okay, so let's look at this. Minimize full-time employees. We're going to set that equal to zero. And then we're going to later define the rest, what z is equal to, a little bit later after we go through our decision break. We're going to have our decision variables. Right here. So we're going to have x of i, that's our index, i being 1 through 7, representing the number of workers starting that's a very important part, starting on day i. And whenever you have a decision variable with an index, your index being i right here, you need to define what your i is. So we put 4 i equals 1, 2, 3, and we go continuing 6, 7. So that means that our index goes from 1 to 7 uh, and you have to define this in every single decision variable. So now we can actually go back to our objective function and look at our minimizing full time equals z. So now we can go our full number of full time employees actually equals x1 plus x2 plus we're going to put dot 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 x of 6 plus x of 7. So this is all of the number of full-time employees starting on each subsequent day. Now we're going to write out our um, constraint. So we'll go, actually, I'll put this in a different color. We're going to put subject 2. So this is going to be our constraints. Now, how many people are going to be working on Monday? If we look at our decision variable, the number of workers starting on day I. So we know that someone working on Monday is going to be right here, so Monday. But you have to work five subsequent days. So you know that someone working on Sunday will also be working on Monday. Someone starting on Saturday 
will be working Sunday and Monday. Someone working on Friday will go through and will work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then will work Tuesday. And then someone starting on Thursday will work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's five days in a row. If we go to Wednesday, we know that someone working Wednesday will start Wednesday, work Thursday. So that's one, two, three, four, five. They will end on Sunday. So you know that someone working on Wednesday or someone starting work on Tuesday will not be working on Monday. So now we can go through and actually look at the number of full time required. That is 11. So we know that someone working on Monday plus someone working on Thursday, someone working on Friday, someone working on Saturday, plus someone working on Sunday. Now, these are all the people who will be working on Monday. And that must be greater than or equal to that minimum given in the table. And now we're going to go through for every single day. And we're going to define it. So we know someone working on Tuesday was working on Monday and working on Tuesday, but was not working on Thursday. We know they were working on Friday. We know they were working on Saturday and we know they were working on Sunday. We'll take that minimum that must be greater than we'll go through Wednesday we know they were working on Monday we know they were working on Tuesday and we know they started working on Wednesday we know that they weren't starting work on Friday but they were on Saturday and they were on Sunday and that has to be greater than 9 we'll go to Thursday We know someone starting work on Monday will work on Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back and correct this. This should be X2. Someone starting work on Tuesday will be working on Thursday. Someone starting work on Wednesday. And someone starting work on Thursday will be working on Thursday. And someone wor starting work on Sunday will be working on Thursday. So that has to be greater than... 15. We have Friday. So we know X1 and we'll take that minimum required of 19 and now we'll go Saturday. So we know someone starting on Monday is actually not going to be working on Saturday. So we're going to start this with X2. And someone starting work on Saturday will be working on Saturday. So that has to be greater than 20. And we'll go Sunday. And we know that that'll start on Wednesday, Thursday, Start on Friday, start on Saturday, and start on Sunday. And that has to be greater than 15. So in this, we have defined an index of 1 through 7 representing the days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have actually looked at our objective function to minimize the full-time employees. That's X1 through X7, the summation of that. And then we've defined our decision variable as the number of workers, I'm going to highlight this, starting on day I, or I equals 1 through 7. A lot of people make the mistake of actually just defining, and I'm going to write this in, um, I'll write this in pink. A lot of people, I'll write, so no one, mistakes this. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. They define this decision variable as x of i as the number of 
employees working on day I or I is one through seven. So instead, you can see that this is just the number of employees working on a day. And then we have our index here, as opposed to the number of workers starting on a day. Very, very important distinction. This would then make your constraints subject to this right here. The number of employees has to be greater than 11 on Monday has to be greater than 11 on Tuesday, has to be greater than 9 on Wednesday, has to be greater than 15 on Thursday, has to be greater than 19 on Friday, has to be greater than 20 on Saturday, and has to be greater than 15 on Sunday. Right? We look at this and we know we can see what's different if we just compare. But if you want to go through and understand why this works and why this doesn't, it's because every single employee is counted five times. So if you started on Wednesday, you're included in the next one. If you started on Tuesday, or if you started on Monday, but you're working on Tuesday, you're, car you're counted once and then twice. Starting on Monday, you're counted one, two, three, four, five times. You're double counted, and that relationship between the starting date and ending date is ignored. So each employee is counted five times. And you can see that in our constraints, we actually never have to relate x1 to x2 or x1 to x3. So it ignores the relationship. So this is just a common mistake made. So you do not want to do this. You want to look at your subject variable and you're subject to and define a work schedule model like this. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, hopefully this video was helpful.